It's now time to add attributes and IK labels to our fit skeleton. Before I get started, I'm going to turn off my joint axis. The first thing I want to add is an attribute to my IK hand and IK foot control. And this attribute is called an IK local attribute. I'm going to show you how uh, very beneficial it is for animators specifically. So this is a new scene and I'm going to add this biped bendy template in here. And if I grab the foot and I go to attributes and I add an IK local and I add it and I do the same thing for the hand, add an IK local and I build my fit skeleton. All right, so the build is complete. Now, if I come over here, grab my IKFK blend control and switch to IK, it has given me this additional controller. And this is going to be very useful for offsetting rotations onto. See, the great thing about advanced skeleton is that every controller has an extra controller. So since we have three axes of rotation, I can decide when I'm animating to offset rotation onto what would now be a total of four controls for the wrist. So you have the main control. Then if you hit the up key, you have an extra control for the main control. And now you have the same thing for the IK local. If you select the IK local, you can hit the up key and you can have an extra controller for that too. You see what this is going to do. And let me activate it on the leg too. So if I go, well, sorry, the leg is already in IK mode. So the leg also has one right here. So if I was animating, uh, the way to avoid gimbal lock would be to offset all my rotation. So if I was blocking animation, for instance, I could resolve that all my rotation Y's of the foot are going to be on the main controller. And then if I want to do maybe like a rotation Z, I can hit the main controller, hit the up key, and then I'll do my rotation Z over there, right? So now I'm is isolating rotations to these individual controllers and it becomes a lot easier to deal with them in the graph editor. And then for the last rotation, which is rotation X, I can set, select the local controller and isolate my rotation X to that one, right? It never really has to get this complicated. You could really just rely on two. I think if I was to, let me grab my extra controller and zero it out too. Let me grab this, hit the up key. And zero this out. I really could just use the main controller for my rotate Y and then maybe use the IK local for the other two or the other way around. Pick two axes of rotation, use them on the main controller and then save this one for another. The point is you're breaking up the three axes of rotation and there's a limited chance of you running into gimbal lock. So I'm going to come over here and add that to my main skeleton. I'm going to select the hand, go down to attributes, look for my IK local, add, and then I'm going to do the same thing to the foot, IK local, add. So the next thing I'm going to add to this fit skeleton are IK labels that allow me to have IK and FK functionality for certain appendages. And I'm specifically talking about the head and the ears. You saw me play around with this when I was showing how offset parent matrix adversely impacts uh, this particular IK label. But what I'm looking for is an IK head. So let me show you the kind of functionality I'll get. If I was to add a biped bendy template and I was to apply these IK labels, this the numbered IK label system, if I add one to the neck and one to the head, you have to number them in sequence. And I build this fit skeleton. All right, so the build is complete. And what I have now is in FK mode, I can rotate my head and my neck, but I can then also now switch to IK mode and have IK functionality for the head right here. This is the feature I was worried might adversely impact the pendant. 
when her head starts moving like this, there might be some weird offsetting. And I told you how I intend to fix that. I'll probably unparent that chain if it's problematic. So I'm going to add these labels to my skeleton. So I'm going to grab my skeleton right here, go to IK labels, add one to my neck, then add one to my head. And I'm also going to do the same thing for my ear. So I'll start with the base of the ear. I'll add a zero. Then I'll add a one right after it. I'm not going to leave any space in between them. So I'll get the most amount of control for the ears. I'll add three. And when you run out of numbers, you could just add the same thing and just change the label, the bone label data right here. Under joint labeling, there's a parameter called other type. So I'm gonna set this to four, and then I'm gonna set the last one to five. So that's all the IK labeling I want to do. So this will give me IKFK functionality for the ear and IKFK functionality for the head. Now, one feature I was contemplating extending to the fingers was IKFK functionality. So I wanted to be able to switch between IK and FK. Now, there is a way to do it that is showcased on the Advanced Skeleton website. And it looks really cool, but I experienced something with it that I don't particularly like. But the great thing is there's another solution, which is um, a temporary IK solution which is called quick ik that is accessible through the selector so let me show you what i don't like about uh baking in ik for now so this is yet again a fit skeleton of the biped bendy template and the way it's recommended to add ik functionality to the fingers is to grab the end finger and add a label of hand to it. You can either add it to this one or the joint before it. I'm actually going to add it to the joint before it because it gives uh, some cool functionality that allows the, well, it's not a cool functionality. It just allows the IK controller to actually control the last digit. So I'm going to go add. And then over here, you do a shoulder. So you're basically extending to it the behavior that is expected of an arm. So basically what this arm has, shoulder and hand. You'll see really cool features, but uh, there's one small problem. So I'm going to build this to show what I get. And you should already see the problem right there. So what you're seeing is this weird little offset and it's not really broken. What it's what has happened is that the IK controller, which this is the control it's giving me to switch between IK and FK. So this is FK mode. All right. Uh, but yeah, this kink is weird. But when I go into my IK mode, the only reason it's doing that is because this pole vector is sitting on the side. I don't know why it doesn't put it up top, but I suppose you would have to move it. Right. But it doesn't feel very intuitive. Uh, I wouldn't want to hand out the rig with looking really weird like that. Yeah. When in FK mode, you have this hitch, this weird hitch. So. Uh, I'll say right now it's not working. I'll probably make a report to Advanced Skeleton or I will forward this part of the video to it. Uh, but other than that, uh, everything still works. The thing I was more concerned about is will the driving system still work? And it does. You will still have the driving system still function uh, unless it's in IK mode. Right, then the driving system will do nothing as expected. Right, but I don't like this. Uh, what I would prefer to use is the temporary IK solution, which you can add in the middle of animation, and that's accessible through the selector. So that one is pretty easy. You just select the end joint, or actually, actually select the control systems, not the joints. You would select the last control that you want the IK applied to, and then the first one, and then you will just go a name, quick IK, and it will give you a controller to have IK functionality for the fingers, and then it'll give you a pull vector. And then there's a way to bake whatever you do down onto the FK controls, but this feels like a better solution. So if I ever needed the character to plant their fingers and I wanted 
IK functionality for the fingers. This is a better way to add it. And then you can get rid of it when uh, you no longer want it. Another feature that I wanted to extend to this rig is a attribute called follow. And it seemed like a really cool thing. I just wish it was working. Follow, it's right there under attributes. So this is the biped bendy template yet again. I'm going to add this feature and the way you add it is you select, it's basically a way of doing space switching with a particular joint. So if I wanted the ability to change how the FK hand follows when the chest rotates, I would just select the chest, then I'll select the shoulder joint and then I'll go to follow and i would add it. And then it adds this parameter to the shoulder. So it says follow chest, All right? If I was to build this, this is the kind of functionality it's supposed to give me. If I was to select this and follow is on 10, then when I rotate the chest, this type of behavior is expected. The hands follow, right? But if I was to turn it off, if I set this to zero, then that hand should no longer be following. The rotation of that hand should no longer be following. So this was supposed to give you this feature in FK. Let me show you what it's actually supposed to do. If I put this back and I switch to IK mode, this feature is built into IK. So if I select the IK controller over here, I should have a follow uh, parameter and if I was to select the chest and I rotate it like this, this type of behavior that you're seeing on the hand, this is what I was expecting in FK. And that's what it's supposed to do when you add that follow parameter to the hand, but it's not doing it. Uh, you can get it in IK though. So if I was to set this follow chest to 10, then I would get the kind of behavior I was getting with the FK, whether or not that parameter was on and off, on or off. So I don't know why it's not working as uh, advertised, but I'm fine with just having this feature in IK so I could switch to IK mode, let it follow the chest or let it not follow the chest by just setting it to zero. And then I can have this type of functionality, but it was supposed to be also available in FK mode with this parameter added. Okay, so that's all the attributes and labels I intend on adding to this fit skeleton. We have the IKFK head, IKFK ears. We have IK local for the wrist and the foot, and that should suffice. So in the next lesson, I'm going to work on the fatness parameters and the building process.